Hello everyone, my name is Christian Mock and I have the honor to give a short introduction to today's Fair Work webinar. Just a bit of background, this is the ninth installment of our webinar series for the Fair Work project and today more or especially Gustavo will give us interesting insights in how multi-agent systems can support decision making in complex industrial systems. Uh, to my understanding, Gustavo will not give much context or introduction to the Fairwork project itself. If you're interested in this, you can look at the other Fairwork webinars that are on our webpage. I think Gustavo will just jump directly into the agent systems, give some theoretical background, and then also uh, show some use cases. And therefore, without further ado, I'm happy to give over to Gustavo so that he can start his interesting presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. And welcome, my name is Gustavo and I work for Morco Lab, as Christian said. In this webinar, I will present you the role of the multi-agent systems in the Fair Work project. I thank you for coming. Starting by the agenda overview, in this presentation, I want to cover some topics related to MAS or MAS, the short for multi-agent systems. I will start by the definition, pointing characteristics pertaining the agents, then go deeper into the multi-agents. Following, I would like to briefly discuss the role of distributed systems in the Industry 5.0. Then I will talk of mass supporting decision making and present an application of multi agent systems in resource allocation, and also an experiment of a robot arm with agents. At the end, I will approach the challenges multi agent systems are facing and the prospects for the future. So, I'd like to begin defining what is an agent in multi agent systems. Authors in the field define agency as slightly different from each other. However, we can perceive the commonalities and reach what is considered a general definition. An agent can be defined as an agency with three features, autonomy, social abilities, proactivity. The first and central feature is their autonomy. An agent is capable of making independent choices, acts on its own authority when it wants. So this is main characteristic that defines an agent is what allows it to operate without the need for constant supervision, intervention. This autonomy enables an agent to adapt to changing circumstances, learn from its experiences, and also achieve these goals. It's the self-governing nature that sets an agent apart from a simple tool making it a dynamic entity in its environment. This characteristic is crucial in many fields where freedom in terms of action is desired in the system, where the ability to act independently and make decisions based on the current context is highly valued. The second one is their social abilities, the ability to work collaboratively with other agents, engaging in mutual interactions to achieve a shared objective is an example of this feature. An agent is capable of communicating with its peers for many different purposes. Based on what it wants to achieve, it can purposefully exchange messages specifically with other agents in order to achieve their own objectives. This social ability allows an agent to collaborate, negotiate, and even compete with other agents to fulfill its objectives. It can share information, delegate tasks, request assistance, adapting its behavior based on the response it receives. All of this is only possible due to these social abilities that the agents have embedded. These abilities are expressed in the form of behaviors alongside communication capabilities that will be mentioned in more detail ahead. The third one, proactivity, take actively the initiative to pursue their established objectives. It's the ability to take the initiative and act according to its goals. Rather um, than just reacting to its environment, this involves sometimes anticipating future states and events, taking actions to address and leverage them. This means that the agent can initiate conversations, ask questions, provide information, and respond to inquiries from the agents allowing to influence its environment and the behavior of other agents rather than just passively adapting to it. This proactivity behavior is often driven by an agent's internal goals, which guide its actions and decisions. In the left bottom side, you can see one of the most classical representations of an agent of Russell Novick. 
It's essentially an entity capable of perceiving the environment in which it is contained through a sensor, data input, and capable of acting upon this environment through effectors. In the right bottom image, an agent is conceptualized as a block divided in three sections. It's conceived as a model encapsulated that has an interface with the real world. It accesses data related to the asset it is representing, be it a machine or a person, and it can make a decision about this data. It receives from the environment and from the other agents. Therefore, act in direction of an objective based on in the interactions it had. So far, we can see that agents are goal-oriented entities that are capable of communicating and interacting in order to achieve these goals, a common communication, a common language. Balance these different capabilities is something important to have in mind in order to represent a variety of stakeholders that interact in the real world and in the virtual environments you can see. Uh, I'd like also to clarify the difference between agents and objects in this object-oriented programming perspective. There is a saying that compiles the idea quite straightforwardly. Objects do things for free while agents do things for money. In other words, objects do what they are programmed to do when they are invoked. They simply perform the actions, not expecting anything back, not anything in exchange for this action. Objects don't have their own desires, intentions, motivations. They perform tasks or functions without any inherent cost or expectation of compensation as they lack consciousness. They have control over their, st over their state, but not over their behavior. On the other hand, as I've just said, agents are entities that can make decisions, exercise judgment, take actions based on their own intentions and goals, because they are motivated by various factors, including personal gain or fulfilling specific roles, responsibilities. This can only happen because they transcend what an object is. They are designed to perform tasks and actions only when they assume it is fit, only when they think they will profit in direction to what they want to achieve. This subtle difference makes the dynamics of agents' interactions rich in terms of what you can accomplish in social environments. Whenever you have some sort of interaction between sentient components with goals to be achieved, we can simulate, we can design mechanisms that will represent these components in a digitized realm, in a digitized world, where multiple inputs from different actors, be it machines, robots, people, can interact with each other and perform tasks together, making decisions together. Agents being conscious and capable of making decisions may require compensation for their services and actions as we do in the real world. In the table below, we can see a comparison of some characteristics. Objects are passive, acting only in reaction to external stimuli, while agents initially passive in many early applications requiring high reactivity, as we can see commonly in the industry, fast response to disturbances, yet may also display proactive behavior by taking the initiative. In terms of decision and autonomy, objects lack the ability to de determine the execution of requested services, while agents are capable of accepting or declining them, relying on knowledge and skills. Objects directly execute the services they were designed and required to do, while agents are required to execute services or to provide information. Even though I've been talking about agents, this is where I want to arrive, multi-agent systems. They take all these interactions between agents in a cohesive system with a well-defined purpose. Examples of environments where multi-agent systems are applied differ from computer games to autonomous vehicles, financial markets, and what we are particularly interested, industrial facilities where many actors can be interpreted as stakeholders in a decision-making process. These stakeholders, therefore, can be represented as agents that interact in this dynamic environment where the number of actors can increase in quantity over time and need to interact to perform their duties. All of that with a well-defined goal and perspective, once again, regarding, in this case, production priorities, objectives, and plan regarding production. Then comes the question, how should agents act 
to fulfill their own tasks. But not only that, how should agents interact to achieve the system's overall goals? How should the agents and their interactions be modeled so as to achieve what is desired in the global perspective, in the global behavior of the system? Talking about industry applications, what we are usually interested is that each agent has a goal aligned with the system's overall goal. We have to be attentive to how model these behaviors as the system get increasingly complex. This next point, multi-agent applications have inter agent interaction in their core, rarely considered isolated, is stress that the point in multi-agent systems is to develop meaningful interaction between the agents so as to provide added value to the stakeholders that benefit from them, not unnecessary communication. The point is really about communication between entities that have their own role, their own perspective of the environment, and need to work together to fulfill the system's global objective, taking decisions, exercising judgment based on these interactions. As I said, they can be motivated by various factors, include personal gain, fulfilling specific roles, and we are interested in the latter, in, because in industrial settings where collaboration between actors, this is required. A collective of decision makers that need to coordinate their decisions, their choices to accomplish their tasks in direction of the system's overall goal altogether. This multi-agent systems approach brings a lot of value to scalable systems. The modularity of the agent concept allows for increased volatility in the number of components, scalability, the social abilities allow them to interact in different forms. Negotiation and collaboration are two of the most interesting. Distributed decisions comes down to how the system is networked. Depending on the cases we deal with, it is very interesting that the agents can interact in many cases not relying on a central point of communication. Naturally, the idea of having knowledge spread among agents communicating with its peers and performing tasks is aggregating in complex scenarios. But MAS is also known for being responsive to perturbations and provides self-configuration in, in industry scenarios. It provides a dynamic architecture where agents can adapt and evolve over time. In industry today, the focus is the integration of physical and cyber elements in one system, but not only um, machines and robots. We, we also have to think about how to integrate the humans. The aim is to integrate these physical elements, machines, robots into this re digital realm alongside representing uh, the people that work in this, in the, in this area, uh, sharing this space. So representing these elements in the cyber physical perspective is still a challenge being overcome. And MAS has been playing a role in representing these interactions of these elements in these complex environments over decentralized network and making the systems to perform diverse types of behaviors in such systems, which I'll talk in the next slide in terms of strategies. First, uh, I would like to talk uh, about a sort of reactive, deliberative spectrum the agents can be designed in. A poor reactive agent could only react to the stimulus it receives from the environment or from the interaction of other agents. In the opposite direction, a poor deliberative agent would be insensitive to inputs and would only delegate tasks to other agents, not considering inputs in return. Considering that, we can talk about the trade-off between the opposite sides. A mostly reactive agent has a fast response to changes in the environment, a change in the dynamics of the system. It's an agent that, that can adapt quickly to new situations, ensuring resilience to the system. However, it lacks the ability to anticipate future events and make, making long-term plans as it focuses primarily in responding to immediate stimuli. This can limit its effectiveness in complex environments where strategic planning and foresight are required. On the other hand, a mostly deliberative agent is capable of better exhibiting these features, but they might be too lazy for a fast changing environment, where time of response is also considered a valuable property, also relying on a whole view of the system to be effective. For a cohesive and efficient multi-agent system, we need to have in mind how to better balance these two characteristics to provide an optimal level of adaptability and strategic planning. 
This balance can be achieved by design agents then that are pr primarily reactive, but with a degree of deliberative capabilities that allow them to plan and anticipate future events. This hybrid approach can ensure that the system is both responsible, responsive to changes in the environment and capable of this strategic planning. It's also important to consider the specific requirements of the environment and the tasks at hand when designing these agents, as different situations may require different balances of reactivity and deliberation. The goal is to create a multi-agent system that is both resilient and efficient, capable of adapting to these new situations while also planning for the future. We can separate how to model the agents between different types of interactions and strategies. Starting with interactions, we can see them in a dependency relation perspective. The names are quite self-explanatory. Independence, when there is no dependency relation between the agents. It happens in scenarios where agents are working and they are working separate tasks or goals for some reason. In a unilateral dependency, one agent depends on another agent, but there is no dependency back. This is seen as a, in hierarchical systems where a subordinate agent relies on a superior one for instructions or resources, but the superior agent doesn't depend on the subordinate. Mutual, two agents depend on each other regarding the same goal. Common in collaborative tasks where the success of one agent is directly tied to the success of the other agent. Both agents must work together to achieve their shared goal. In a reciprocal dependency, two agents depend on each other, but for distinct goals. It reminds of a give and take dynamic where each agent provides something the other agent needs to achieve their respective goals. These dependency relations have a great influence on what type of strategy should be designed. In this next slide, I present some of the most common and interesting strategies in the multi-agent system perspective. Cooperative, mutual assistance and shared goals among agents within the system. In cooperative interactions, agents collaborate and work together towards a shared goal, leading to a synergy where the collective performance exceeds the sum of individual performance. This type of strategy is interesting to solving complex problems that are beyond the capability of a single agent. This is the core of multi-agents in most of the applications. Collaborative emphasizes joint efforts and coordinated actions to achieve common objectives. It's a deeper form of cooperation where agents not only work together towards a shared goal, but they also actively participate in joint decision-making processes and contribute their individual expertise and knowledge for the collective efforts. They make decisions together. This type of strategy is the aim of many industrial applications. Negotiation enable agents to engage in discussions and reach agreements through communication. Negotiation is a communication process where agents bargain to reach a mutually beneficial agreement. It's quite useful for solving conflicts and making collective decisions. It's interesting for resource allocation scenarios where stakeholders want to actively participate in the decision-making process and see their inputs being taken into account. Competition, individual pursuit of objectives, fostering rivalry and striving for superiority among agents. An example is the online auction systems where multiple buyers compete to win for an item. They try to outbid others while also trying to pay the least amount possible. And adversarial, promote conflict and strategic maneuvering among agents to disrupt opponents. Applicants Applications of this strategy are commonly seen in research related to game theory and exploiting use cases in strategy games like uh, StarCraft. An interesting question regarding MAS and distributed systems is the following. How can one create a system that can function autonomously within a networked, distributed or decentralized and scalable environment? where it must engage with diverse components representing diverse stakeholders. The multi-agent systems come from the distributed AI field. They are the ideal infra infrastructure for implementing decision-making systems due to this technology's inherent characteristic of working with a decentralized paradigm. 
In industry, as in the cases we are working on, a single use case can be decomposed in many scenarios. And in each of these scenarios, you can have a plethora of different types of agents. And from different parts of the production chain, that might want to communicate between themselves. So you can have so many agents distributed in a system that needs to communicate between them that these MAS and the distributed systems are, are, are really one make for the other. They they are they they come from the my MAS come from these AI fields that has everything to do with decentralized systems. It provides great added value when such use cases are modeled under this perspective. And we are especially interested in how we can integrate human aspects into these decisions chains. We can represent a human participation in the decision-making process by having agents representing humans. We can take a diverse range of data, for instance, physical and psychological data ranging from heartbeats to stress levels. We can take the preference of workers in terms of what or where they would rather work in, in the production line, for instance, and use this data as relevant information into allocating a worker in a workspace, for example. These humans, factors, personas, if I can use the term, play an interesting role with multi-agent systems, placing the human in the center in these decision-making processes. So distributed and decentralized entities is what we encounter in industrial settings. Multi-agents is a big thing in this realm. In um, multi-agent support decision-making. In MAS, it's not about one entity making the decision, right? The decisions come together from agents pooling data and exchanging in a plural and decentralized environment. What's intriguing is how the behavior of one system adjusts based on the collective inputs. Making an analogy, you can think of it as a group conversation where everyone's opinions influence the direction of the discussion. The system responds to this interaction, adapting its behavior accordingly. Now, how effective is the decision support in these systems? It depends on the problem. The decision support will work as effective as how flexible is the problem. In rich settings, MAS doesn't provide much of added value. Design mechanisms impact how these interactions happen. Therefore, the recommendations outcome one can prioritize certain agents, one can give more importance, more weight to an agent than another, following some principles. It will always depend on the purposes, on the goals of the systems and how these principles should be handled by the stakeholders. Now I'll talk briefly about some examples of MAS applications in resource allocation, production scheduling, Agents allocate resources like machinery, labor, and raw material for optimizing production schedules, managing the flow of tasks ac across different manufacturing stages, so to minimize downtime, maximize throughput, and this dynamic reconfigurability and resilience disturbance to disturbances is an interesting application for MAS. Agents within the system coordinate inventory levels by predicting demand, ordering raw materials, managing stocks across multiple locations. It helps avoiding shortages, overstocking, optimizing storage and space, also costs. Supply chain coordination, multi-agent systems aid in coordinating with suppliers and distributors, optimizing the flow of materials and components in the supply chain. The agents can negotiate contracts, track deliveries, and even adjust orders based on demand fluctuations. Workload balance. This type of scenario offers the opportunity for worker allocation as a resource for the production environment. It involves evenly distributing tasks among workers to ensure that no single worker is overwhelmed while others are idle, or it can also work as a response to a disturbance. Considering a production plan already established, if an unexpected worker expected worker placed on a certain production line fails to attend to the shift the manager of the line might have multiple variables to take into account in order to substitute that worker mas can be applied in such settings to support this decision in the uh, research location Gustavo, five short, minutes you have about five minutes yeah thank you very much Kristen. that's great 
In the resource allocation prototype we're developing, we take base in our workload balance use case scenario in which the multi-agent system is modeled based on the stakeholders identified. We have the production lines and workers represented as agents following the process modeling for this scenario based on the characteristics such as the experience that each worker has on each production line, the preferences that each worker has for working on that particular line accordingly to the workers currently available and the current production demands, communication between line agents and work agents takes place. Based on the parameters mentioned, the workers are ranked in a score sequence and the most suitable is recommended to be allocated to each line consecutively according to the priority in the production plan. You can see in the left image, the pool of workers are available to be allocated and based on the requirements of each line and preferences of these workers, they are ranked based on these requisitions. In the right image, it's an overall view of the agents interacting. And what you want to offer is support to the decision maker in terms of what workers should be allocated to the respective line based on the data that can be collected from the workers as its preferences and also naturally information related to, the, to their capacity to perform the demanded task. This approach can offer a quick response to the management team in a situation where an expected worker for a shift isn't available and a fast answer to this disruption uh, is desired. Here I have a video of what I just showed. Show. Uh, I think I'm gonna skip to the next one and maybe at the end we can talk about it if you want. I'm going to talk now about the robot experiment with the multi-agent systems. Um, here's an example of a robot arm agent controlled for saving human orders. It's a decentralized system, easily scalable. The agent communication allows for coordination between the stakeholders and provides a setting for interaction with human needs in a dynamic environment. So this robot experiment is being used for the research the arm is agent controlled and used for simulating a cough making machine. This system was modeled to represent the stakeholders as agents uh, provide interactions between the parties in which the goal is to place the cough order. The person is represented by a customer agent who places the order to an agent representing the robot which in turn interacts with an agent representing the coffee recipe. The three layers of agents can be seen as interacting horizontally and vertically between themselves based on what they want to achieve, on what data or message they want to access and exchange. I'm also gonna skip this video, but I can show you later. And then challenges and prospects for the future. In the research involved multi-agent systems in fair work, we face some challenges. And here I bring some interesting questions that are being worked on and are interesting to be reflected and discussed. What can one make to promote a fairer decision-making comparison of what you have today? How to properly model and experiment with the agent's interactions to achieve fairer decisions? How to proper balance stakeholders' representation? What characteristics should be considered when balancing representation through MAS and decision-making processes. How explainability of the algorithms embedded in the system can impact acceptance and how can one foster trust in the decision-making process in complex decisions? I'd like to hear from you in a minute if you have a say on that. And in a recent hype cycle of Gartner for artificial intelligence, multi-agent systems were listed in the innovation trigger of the hype cycle loop. We are thrilled to be part of pushing this technology ahead, researching and experimenting with its potentials. So with that, uh, this is the end of the webinar. I'd like to thank you for your attention. This is my content. If you want to keep in touch, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll try my best to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Thank you very much, Gustavo, for this interesting presentation. Are there any questions from the participants? Time, you can go back to the videos to watch it. What? If you can go back to the videos and watch the videos. Oh, sure. Okay. This one. So do you want to make any, any specific question, uh, Khadija?
So what happens here is that uh, the workers are scored and allocated based on the ranking of this score. And in the right side, you can see the communication between the worker agents with the line agents. So I launched the line 17 agent here, requiring for us the worker to be allocated and based on the parameters of the worker preference, uh, and also the ability of the worker in that line, there is this negotiation between the worker agents and the line agents. And the one that has the biggest score is recommended uh, to be allocated to that line. And then this happens also for line 18 and 20 based on the production priority. Do you have any specific question? Uh, no, no, just I was curious about uh, uh, okay. about the videos. And the other one is about the robot's arm performing the picking place of the, the coffee pots. So here I have a customer client uh, asking for this coffee. And if I'm not wrong, this is the Lungo. And it sends this request to the resource agent that's, uh, that the robot represents. Then as soon as the resource agent knows what coffee the customer wants to make, it access a third agent where there is this recipes of, in this case, how to, to the robot movement to get this, co this coffee specifically, and also the additionals, the sugar and the soy milk. So this is an opportunity for exploring in terms of interaction between the humans and the agents in a system that can be scalable, you can increase the number of robots and the complexity and also connect to knowledge in terms of, for instance, you know, the robot knows the client is diabetic, it won't give uh, a recommendation to put sugar in the coffee and so on. If you have uh, anything to say, feel free. Uh, no, thank you. Thank you very much for your question for you for your for asking to show the videos thank you so i think that's it yeah then thank you again everyone for participating have a nice day and hopefully we see us in think in about two weeks for our next webinar about ai algorithms in the decision making of fair work then thank you and goodbye thank you bye bye thank you